above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. In fact, the spirit of blasphemy comes from his mouth to this day. When Barack Obama is accepting worship, accepting prayers, and I just, I had to cringe, I saw this article the other day saying that he is better than Jesus Christ, Barack Obama. Oh, wow. Better than Jesus Christ. That's Antichrist. You can't get more Antichrist than that. All right. Now, strange things are happening here. Satan does occupy positions, and he tries to get into certain people. He'll try to get into the highest place he can get, like he wanted to get into heaven in the sides of the north. So he wanted to get to the utmost heights. Now, in our country, that would be the White House. In the world, probably the UN, the European Union, the World Court, but somebody is going to occupy that position. Now, verse 15 says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That'll be the result. He's not going to be successful. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? When they see Satan, they're going to... You mean it was him that did all that damage? How much damage could Barack Obama possibly do? You know, I everything this guy does, I can see Satan in him. Now he's got this uh, Amanda Simpson that he appointed to the Commerce Department, a high position. And she used to be a he. It's, it was a man, transgender, now a woman. And Barack Obama said he's hoping for a hundred more transgenders. You know, everything he says and does is blasphemous and it's antichrist. Okay? Now, and yet people worship him. I heard from some people in down in Texas that work for Exxon Mobil. And they gave out one of my newsletters to a, it was a security guard that gave it to another security guard. And that guy happened to be an Obama fan and he went ballistic and got a hold of her supervisor. They took it to personnel. They called her in, threatened her, gave her a three-day suspension without pay because of my newsletter. And they, she may be fired. They said, this is going to go all the way to the top. That's our president. And they worship him. Do we have no ability for redress? For uh, calling down things that are wrong? Anyway, verse 17 says, that made the world a wilderness, and it is a spiritual jungle out there, is it not? And what is a jungle? A garden run amok. Okay? That made the earth a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. Satan destroys cities. That opened not the house of his prisoners. He will never let his people go. Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Amen. And God said he would raise up a prophet like unto Moses, which is Jesus Christ. And when Jesus says to Satan, let my people go, he's got to let him go. Amen. All right? But Satan won't open the house of his prisoners. They're bound. They're stuck. Only one way out. And that's Jesus. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory. Everyone in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as a raiment, as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. In other words, 
a leader of evil defeated in battle by the sword of the Lord. Amen. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Oh, they have temporary glory for a little while, but in the end, it's absolute reproach and shame on them. Amen. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. See, judgment is coming on all those, all of Satan. Satan has children. Let's face it. And judgment's coming upon them. That they, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities, which is what he's trying to do right now. For I will rise up. See, what it is, they're trying to dissolve the borders of countries in favor of having cities. It's like city-states. It's easier to control through cities than it is through countries. And they have major certain select cities that are being occupied and spiritually. And they would be directly answerable to the one world dictator. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make, in other words, there will be no continuity anymore. No inheritance. It, it's coming to an absolute end. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. A besom is a broom. If you ever hear these old Dutch people talk, they're, they're the, some of the cleanest people in the world. They clean everything. One of their favorite things is the besom. They have a little song they sing, the besom, the besom, you know. And they, they sweep everything in sight. And the Lord has a broom. Amen. Not the type that Hillary rides. <laughs> the Lord has a broom. And when he sweeps, he sweeps. All right? The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. You can't change what God has determined to do. That's comforting to me. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. So he talks about the Assyrians because they were wielding such great influence at that time. Remember, the children of Israel, not Judah, but Israel, were carried off by the Assyrians. And that's why God is specifically mentioning the Assyrians here as being broken down. But he notice he goes on to include the whole earth. And so he says, this is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed. Oh, there's such power in his purpose. Amen. And who shall disannul it? Who could? <laughs> Certainly not that little uh, clown in the White House. There's no way. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? That's right. Here they have this big thing going about global warming. Look what the Lord has done. He sent winter on the world. And we're talking about Europe, throughout Europe, countries buried in snow and ice. And boy, he let them have it, our country. He gave us a winter to remember. Records Amen. are being broken everywhere. Amen. That's God's answer to that nonsense. <laughs> All right? So I don't know where Igor is now, or Al Gore, pardon. Maybe he's out looking for a brain for himself. That's right. But anyway, so nobody can disannul what God has purposed to do. Oh, yes. In verse 28, it says, In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. 